welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Ashling B and in the news this week. In Manchester, there's evidence that a year of repeated hot washing inevitably takes its toll on face masks. <laughs> <laughs> With Prince Andrew in hiding and forced to order his meals from his local takeaway, word spreads that he's allergic to coriander. <laughs> Pedigree Chum recalls tins of its new dog food after discovering that some of them contained minute traces of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> On Ian's team tonight, a journalist who is also the new host of Mastermind is also a supporter of Manchester City, which is ironic because in the Champions League final, they were oh. totally unable to pass. Oh. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Please welcome Clive Myrie! And with Paul tonight is a comedian and a writer who says she finds people who text her too much really irritating. I mean, I was only asking if you wanted to go for a drink after the show or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit, I don't know, passive aggressive to do it this way, but... Please welcome to the show a woman I thought was my best friend, Roshin Connerty! <laughs> so, yes, we begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Paul and Roshin, have a look at this. That's Boris and uh, I don't know who she is. <laughs> Carrie. Who? Carrie. Oh, they, come, they come and go, don't they? Um, <laughs> <laughs> there, that's Westminster Cathedral and there's somebody wearing a big hat. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, so Boris got married secretly on Saturday and uh, everybody's very happy for them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whoever they may be. <laughs> yes, pretty sure that's it. It's the Prime Minister's marriage to Carrie Simmons. Carrie, right. Carrie. Mm. Carrie Simmons. Remember her for as long as she lasts. Um, <laughs> yes, they had the reception out in the grounds of number 10. Although, as someone pointed out, I can't believe they double booked the number 10 rose garden for the photos. <laughs> Boris is giving her the sort of look there as if he's desperately trying to memorise her face. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people say I look like Carrie, and then um, a lot of people say I look like Boris, it yes. seems. Um, someone on uh, uh, Facebook, if you combine their faces together, it looks more like me than either of them. <laughs> I actually think, because I think we have the photo, so this is what someone on Twitter did. <laughs> <laughs> I've had family members texting me that. The ceremony was in Westminster Cathedral. How come twice divorced Boris was allowed to get married there, given the Catholic Church doesn't actually allow divorcees to remarry in a church? It's a very, very good question. Mm -hmm. And raised a lot of consternation mm -hmm. among Catholics and uh, some clergy as well. Indeed, one father said there clearly is one canon law for the rich and one for the poor. It's a technicality. And obviously the country were amazed that Boris should be failing to obey the rules <laughs> um, in terms of his marriage as well as everything else. Um, apparently, this particular version of Catholicism means that if you've got married as a Catholic before, you're married. If you've got married in the C of E before, you're not married. So Boris came fresh to the altar. <laughs> <laughs> and she hasn't been married before. And so she could wear white, he could turn up, and, and people could say, doesn't the father of the bride look lovely? <laughs> <laughs> you see the folks that had hay bales. Hay bales? It's like a festival wedding outside. And... That's right, she was barefoot, wasn't she? Yeah. <laughs> Down the it was very clear to tell us that the, the Prime Minister had actually paid for the entire wedding. It's fantastic. Have you ever heard of that before? <laughs> <laughs> I'm someone paying for the entire... I mean, just unbelievable. What a guy. Um, <laughs> well, but... they'd save so much money, you know, not buying anything in their house, I suppose. They'd a bit of cash. Yes. <laughs> and I think it's quite indicative that when someone else is paying, it's gold wallpaper. <laughs> and when he's paying, it's hay bales. <laughs> <laughs> shoes for the bride? No, I, I don't think No so. shoes. <laughs> so the wedding took place without members of the public gawping at them. Do you know how they managed to do it? The cathedral was cleared of tourists mm -hmm. just before half past one. I mean, <laughs> they got me out. I was just... <laughs> <laughs> you stood there with your confetti. <laughs> 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 but I've got my confetti. <laughs> 
He said no friends, so I thought I'll come. <laughs> But do you know what they told the people and the staff who were in the church? So they, they ushered them out by telling them that the building was under lockdown. <gasps> so as if, oh. yeah, I know. And then um, according to- The first to... lockdown that Boris has been on time with. <laughs> <laughs> Getting out of it. True. But yes, many staff and clergy were unaware of what was going on. That's an automated response there from the church. Have you ever heard one? <laughs> <laughs> Father, interesting. Um, so yes, Carrie hired her wedding dress for forty-five pounds, actually. But what precaution did she take with it? She bought a backup dress, full price, twenty grand. She doesn't know who bought it. Oh, <laughs> I know this. Amazingly, oh, Clive, surely you know this. In order to fool all the journalists who'd be trying to work out desperately when they were getting married, she ordered four dresses from the shop. Uh, or ordered. She tried to borrow four dresses. Um, there was a, a casual one, there was a scary one, there was a spice... <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you're mixing up with a spice girl. No, so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she ordered four and one of them was white wedding so that no one could think, I know what she's up to. Ah, uh, clever. Uh, yes, I suppose it was, except it wasn't four, and this is a technicality, I'm going to have to pull you one in. It was actually three decoy dresses in order to stop the details of what she was going to be wearing. Oh, but four in all? Yes, because the real God one that she damn it, that's true! <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> There's a lot of catching up and maths to do this yeah. year, I know. <laughs> I'm dressed like Carol Vorderman, but I haven't brought everything else with me, <laughs> unfortunately. Who provided the music for the Hay Bale Festival wedding? I think it was mm. a folk band called The Fiddlers. Yes. It's pathetic how much I know. <laughs> <laughs> True, Ian. Oh, well... I mean, you would, you would think the Roman Catholic Church would know better. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, there, you are almost right. The band is actually called Fiddlin' About. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yes. What was the other good news for Boris Johnson recently? Well, there was no one at the back shouting, it should have been me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jennifer Curry didn't turn up in full flag outfit. <laughs> well, you're talking about him not breaking the ministerial code. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, he, he, yes. He was allowed but, to... Yes, yes, that's yes. right. Lord Geit, the independent advisor on uh, minister standards, he... Um... You say that so straight-faced. I... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm used to saying things. Straight face. <laughs> <laughs> He's been cleared uh, in relation to the uh, refurbishment of his lodgings mm -hmm. in Downing Street. Mm -hmm. And the uh, independent Lord Guite advisor, he basically said that um, he probably should have been a little bit more careful in understanding and knowing who was paying for the refurbishment of the flat before accepting that the flat was going to be refurbished. Yes, exactly. Um, he was cleared of breaking the ministerial code by Lord Geit, mm -hmm. and his lordship described the Prime Minister, uh, he actually said he was unwise, unwise to have pursued with work without finding <laughs> out how it was funded. <laughs> <laughs> unwise! Um, yes, and then Conservative Party donor Lord Brownlow, there he is. That's just Boris with no hair. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they sharing a fence? <laughs> well, you can talk. <laughs> yes. Lord Brownlow could just have been paying Boris's bills to curry favour with him, which is uh, one idea, but why did Lord Geit rule that out? Because it was really badly decorated. <laughs> <laughs> did you see the flat? No, actually. I think I would have called the police if I came in. <laughs> <laughs> And someone had surprised that. I'd be like, what have I done? Who are my enemies? <laughs> well, Lord Guide said about Lord Brownlow, he said that Brownlow couldn't possibly gain any advantage from paying the bill as he'd already given the Conservative Party so much money, adding that Lord Brownlow acted with altruistic... <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's perfectly reasonable you can't say it with a straight face. It's cobbler. Look at <laughs> That's why I react to stupid lies. I can't say them. Uh, Lord Brownlow acted for altruistic and philanthropic motives. 
Lord Guyte had also looked into whether the health secretary, Matt Hancock, should have really not um, had a, a firm that he had invested in, which his sister owned, which had a contract from the government. And he'd cleared Hancock, so he could hardly find the Prime Minister guilty. <laughs> I mean, incredibly bad form. This guy who was doing the investigation, Lord, whatever his name was, who ennobled him as a Lord, which... Uh... Lord Guy, that's a very good question. He used to work at the palace. Yes, he did, yeah. He's Queen's private secretary, I think. Yeah, so who gave yeah. him his lordship? Oh, Ooh, no. Just wondered if it was the Conservative Party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should think yes. that's an appalling suggestion. Oh, right. yes. Can I make it an accusation, then? But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was Theresa May who made him a lord. Oh! oh Theresa May. There we are. <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> no further questions. Uh, so, um, who didn't break the ministerial code according to Lord Guide? Matt Hancock, who did not declare his 20% shareholding in a company run by his sister, which won that NHS contract. Although this apparently is only a minor breach of ministerial <laughs> code. And also, his sister's company is called Topwood, uh, which kind of describes Matt Hancock from the neck up, really, doesn't it? <laughs> well, Lord Guyte also said that uh, Matt Hancock, while he had carried out a tiny <laughs> breach of the ministerial code, he said that his honour should not be impugned and his reputation is still intact. Yes, but what sort of reputation has he got? <laughs> well, <laughs> indeed, indeed. How is Boris Johnson using Matt Hancock, according to the Sunday Times? Oh, it was a heat-seeking sacking the individual, <laughs> when eventually somebody has to go for the cock-ups during the initial stages of the pandemic, then he'd be the one to go, with his reputation intact. <laughs> <laughs> he arrived as an idiot, he left as an idiot. <laughs> This is the news of the wedding of the week. Carrie married Boris Johnson in secret. As guests partied into the night, they sat around a fire pit in the number 10 garden. That's going to come in very handy in the days leading up to the inquiry. <laughs> <laughs> As is traditional, Carrie threw her bouquet over her shoulder to see who would marry next. And Boris <laughs> dived right <laughs> in a cottage. <laughs> At the reception was provided by an acoustic trio, Fiddlin' About. Boris has always been a big fan and likes the band too. <laughs> Ian and Clive, take a look at this. Boris Bucket School. That's the vaccination programme, is that right? That yeah, them? yeah. And <laughs> someone enjoying the sun. A bit too much sun there. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all counting down, yes. Essentially, you have got Boris Johnson coming out with uh, the fact that he's willing to stump up an extra £1.4 billion in order to help children catch up with their education uh, that they've lost during the pandemic. And uh, the guy who's supposed to be in charge of all this, he actually resigned because he didn't think that was enough. Can I just interrupt you there, Clive? Mm. I know you don't want to say this, but early on, people said the Prime Minister keeps on over-promising and under-delivering. Do you think the fact that he basically promised 10 billion for the catch up and delivered one is another example of this? <laughs> I, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's. I'm just saying, it's, I've a, no it's idea. a legitimate question. I'm not entirely sure he did promise that, though. I think that's what his czar wanted. Um, but he still didn't You think get he it. just didn't know? <laughs> he just no one didn't told give it him. to him. There was yeah. a definite feeling in the weeks leading up to this <laughs> announcement that everyone said, you know, this is going to be a huge take, It's going to take a lot of money. I'm sure you must have, must, must have heard rumours, Clive. I, uh, potentially, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Clive, Clive has survived 30 years at the BBC. You're not going to get it like that. Exactly. You know, I've survived so many... Bullets. <laughs> it's coming and I'm getting incoming from here. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just trying to get no, no, to the heart no, of this story. No, 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 you're, you're, yeah, no, you're, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying this. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so Kevin Collins is who you're talking about. Mm. He asked for £15 billion and also wanted to extend the school day over a period of three years to make up for lost time. A question for you all, how does £1.4 billion compare with other countries, what they were doing to help school recoveries? It's pretty low. It's not as much. Yeah. <laughs> How much was Track and Trace again? About 36 billion. Just, you know, you just sort of think that maybe they're not good at... Just that seems like the maths are all off. And that... I think your maybe is really nice there, Roshi. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, I'll tell you now, according to the Institute for Fiscal Studies, the US government is providing extra education to the tune of £1,600 per pupil, that's in the US. In the Netherlands, they're providing £2,500 per pupil. And then in the UK, what they're donating works out as £50 <laughs> per pupil. So I think we all know what accents are going to be uh, on a lot of the mastermind contestants, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> About 20 years time. Um, Boris Johnson is under pressure to stick to the roadmap and lift all remaining COVID restrictions on June the 21st. Those in favour include former Conservative leader, uh, now Sir Paul, mm -hmm. um, Ian Duncan Smith. So he's become a Sir. Has he? Yeah. Anyone hear what Sir Ian Duncan Smith had to say? No, but, I mean, he was so useless <laughs> as a Tory leader, he didn't even risk putting him in charge of an election. He just sort of, like, he was just so useless, he came and went. Yeah. Pretty he, much. Ian Duncan Smith, three of them. <laughs> <laughs> as I used to say on this programme many years ago, Ian and Duncan Smith. <laughs> well, he's worried that the government will backtrack. He said, they keep saying we're going to listen to the science, but they're not. They're listening to the scientists. <laughs> <laughs> But what is the fly in the ointment, as it were? The Delta variant, as it's now called, um, by the World Health Organisation, which is a sort of uh, slightly more... It is more transmissible, but uh, if you've had the vaccination, you should still be OK. But uh, this thing is unpredictable, so they don't know where they're going to be in a couple of weeks' time. So it is sort of rather dangerous to set a date in absolute concrete and stone and say it's going to happen then when um, things could change. I mean, when he announced the roadmap, he said, this is about the data, not dates, mm. and then announced four dates. Yes. Um, and this is the last of the dates, so we don't know. Boris keeps saying, I don't see anything in the data. Like, like that's his skill set. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's wild. Well, it's one of those ways the English language can sort of fool and bemuse you. I, say, I, I don't see anything in the data. Not, not, there isn't anything in the data. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's exactly it. Do you no. think that's like a, a class at Eton? You know what I mean? Like dodge using English. Not in my day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just a caretaker. <laughs> I'd love to see a sitcom where you're a caretaker. Yeah, it's Eton. Yeah, well, that's it. <laughs> or was Eton that... mess. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, yeah. Ian is the principal and you two have, like, a real, like, cigarette and sweeping chats about the world, but you can't really hang out in the real world because you're from different classes. It's yeah. in the 50s. And, then, well, we, <laughs> and, we, and for a laugh, we swap hats and some new parents come around and they think, I'm the principal, oh. and they think he's the caretaker, and off we run, ten-part series. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not against it at all. No. Yeah. <laughs> I meet all the new mums. Hello, darling. <laughs> <laughs> This is the uncertainty over whether lockdown will be lifted on the 21st of June. Suspicions were raised that the virus was actually man-made when last year one of the Wuhan lab technicians bought shares in Zoom, Deliveroo <laughs> and sourdough proving drawers. <laughs> and so to round two. Round two? It's the jigsaw of noon. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, fingers on buzzers teams. Buzz when you know what it is. Ah, yes, in an attempt to uh, revive his popularity, Keir Starmer is going to interview Piers Morgan. Uh, <laughs> and his twin brother's appearing with him in the middle. Ah, uh, yes, so uh, Keir Starmer is going to be interviewed on Piers Morgan's Life Stories, as I think it's called. But, I mean, it's a very successful format. You have to go on and cry. Yes. <laughs> um, and then everyone loves you. Yes, they do. Very, very simple. So he'll be asking him about the latest by-elections, then. <laughs> <laughs> what did we learn? He moisturises. <gasps> but he wouldn't say what? <laughs> <laughs> he, said that was, he said that's private. <laughs> You're in the right ballpark. He was asked whether he took drugs. Piers Morgan was very keen to ask him whether he took drugs mm -hmm. when he was at university. And he wouldn't answer that question. He just said he had a good time. Yes. So he refused to answer whether or not he had taken drugs, a question he refused to answer 14 times. And he said instead, which we have a clip of here... Am I right in assuming, from your response, that you have tried drugs, but that you didn't actually like them and didn't want to take them anymore? Piers, we had a good time at university. So that's a yes. We had a good time at university. That's a yes. <laughs> that's a yes. 
You haven't said no. I haven't said no. No denial. We had a good time. <laughs> we got that. Well, surely at university, Ian, at university, you must have been, you know, you must have been enticed into taking some snuff at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you Let's put it this way, Paul, we had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, Piers Morgan asked Keir to sum up a Keir Starmer Britain in three words. <laughs> so, what did he go for? The United Kingdom. <laughs> Not Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> good <laughs> morning, Britain. <laughs> <laughs> So good if he said, have said, said that. Been that's that's so that's annoying cool. he didn't say yeah. that. <laughs> Goodbye, <Okay>. morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, he heard three words, so these are the three words. Pride in our country, dignity for children growing up, dignity at oh. work and change. I think that's right, though. He shouldn't play yeah, with three yeah, words. Yeah, you're right. At least try and answer it with a policy of some... Do you disagree, Ian? You've got your face of disagreement on. No, not at all. Oh. I thought exactly right. Oh, I and he's got his face of disagreement on. That's his natural resting <laughs> 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 He's been chucked out of more pubs for looking like that than the other person you can see here. I can read the nuances now. I, I, I was literally <laughs> thinking that's exactly that's right. right. I've just got a bitch face. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we would have ever developed as, as a race if three words were only allowed. I once heard, actually, I misheard a Radio 4 documentary when I heard somebody say that the most important development in the human species was the development of luggage. And I thought, yeah, well, I suppose you would need a case to move around. It was language. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to justify, well, if you were going to go to some place, you'd have to carry your clothes with you. Yeah, that would, that would make sense, to go from one cave to another, development of luggage. Yeah, that initial migration out of Africa, you need quite a lot of luggage. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, finally, do you want to see what is perhaps the best scene ever to have aired on Coronation Street? Absolutely. Without oh a God. doubt. It was this week. Watch this. <laughs> It. <laughs> it. Incredible scene. Did one woman fail the other woman on her MOT? <laughs> <laughs> the side in the distance. That was bad. And is it is it easy to acquire these tasers like that? Well, that's what I was kind of you wondering. Just go into the local Aldi and buy a taser. Are you looking to take out? Yeah. <laughs> Steady. Well, I mean, Ian did advertise some on the shopping channel. Do you remember? That? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah. Yeah. Other tasers are available, but I did. I had a fantastically <laughs> good version. It was called the Leave It Out Taser. Leave it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, yes, this is Keir Starmer's interview with Piers Morgan. After the interview, several viewers tweeted that Keir seemed like someone they could go for a pint with. I mean, yeah, but, like, only if your train was late and... Like, even then, maybe just a half or something like that. <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its gets publication, The Finial, the magazine of the antique silver spoon collectors. It's not cheap, but serious collectors are prepared to fork out. <laughs> and we start with annual what festival ruined by what? Annual spoon festival ruined by fork, by knife, by cutlery. <laughs> An inappropriate, inappropriate cutlery. It's, yeah, it's actually not... Not spoons. Not spoons. Not spoons. No, not spoons. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. There's two, four, six of Ooh. the subject matter of this, of this festival here. Testicles. Yes! <laughs> well, oh, I happen to know there's seven. Okie doke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying anything other than that, but one of us uses one as a spare. <laughs> I will be fact-checking this later. <laughs> it's actually annual testicle eating festival. Oh. Oh. Ruined by fraudsters. Um, yeah, but I mean, that's the problem with testicle eating competitions. It's not the meat that fills you up, it's the two veg. <laughs> <laughs> So next, man whose dog runs off regrets calling him what? Man whose dog runs off regrets calling him go away. <laughs> <laughs> Get lost. Oh. Bugger off. <laughs> the Russian dog. Which one? Oh. Bugger off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the man whose dog runs off regrets calling him a whore. <laughs> <laughs> You're a whore. <laughs> well, you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, the answer is man whose dog runs off regrets calling him River. Yes, 
A man in the Lake District was left red-faced after he lost his dog, River, near a river. <laughs> Next, new world record set for fastest what in Yorkshire? Act of generosity. <laughs> <laughs> The answer is new world record set for fastest wheelie bin in Yorkshire. Here is record holder Andy Jennings speeding along at 45 miles per hour. Is it a wheelie bin? That's a, I'd That's say that was not. quite dangerous. Yeah. I hope that was a Tuesday because it's a green bin. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, our last one. What and what are both desirable features of early spoons for which we should be grateful? Ah, slight hollow and handle are both desirable features of early spoons for which you should be grateful. <laughs> Width and girth. How dare you, sir. Excuse me, guys. Is it, is it Anton Deck? <laughs> <laughs> no, the answer is actually ridged stems and rat tails are both desirable features of early spoons for which we should feel grateful. Um, but why should we feel grateful? Yeah, I don't feel remotely grateful. <laughs> But as far as I'm concerned, they can take the early spoon and shove it up. What's the next question? <laughs> <laughs> That's a little tip on how to do mastermind. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. My nice pleasure. So the final scores are in, and Ian and Clive have four points, but Paul and Roisin have five points. No. Yes. <laughs> I think I'm out of myself. <laughs> And I leave you now with news that in central London, as a third wave threatens the nightclub industry, staff may be waiting in vain for the reopening of Stringfellows. <laughs> <laughs> in Pinewood, one career criminal is lucky to get away with just community service. <laughs> and in just outside Ullapool, an attempt to break the world record for longest lasting Highland fling enters its sixth hour and excitement is reaching fever pitch. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>a story that needs to be heard to be believed the disappearance of Shergar the superhorse one of sport's strangest crimes now on BBC Sounds and he finally got his second series but all good things come to an end Alan Partridge is going out in royal style this time next